in this lesson, we will be speaking about the COS rule. So let me quickly write down the formula for you, and then we'll just start to try to understand this weird looking formula, which your teacher probably showed you in class recently. So let's just quickly write that a little bit better. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a random uh, little triangle. Okay, and I'm just gonna put some random letters, okay? So um, let's say, for example, this is V, W, Y, and then the angles, they usually have capital letters. So I'll say something like P, R, and T. Okay, now let's say, for example, that they would like you to find uh, V. So you need to find V. So that's side V, that's this one over here. So what you then need to understand about this formula is that these two parts here are the two most important parts in the whole formula. And if you understand how those two parts work, then the rest is very easy. The A and the B, it's, it's super easy. So what I want you to understand is that this part over here is a side, the side, and then this part over here is the angle opposite that side. So, so, so these two are opposites of each other. So the one is the side and the one is the angle. So for example, if you want to, if you want to find, um, if you want to find side V, okay, then you will change this to a V and then the angle opposite that would be a P. So you'd put a P over here. Okay. Um, let's try another one quickly. So let's change it back to what it was. Let's say you were trying to find Let's say you're trying to find um, side y. You're trying to find y. So then what would happen is that you would put the y over here, and then the angle opposite would be the t, and so you'd put that over there. I'll explain a and b shortly. And let's say, let's change it back to what it was. Let's say, for example, you were trying to find um, side what haven't we done? W. Okay, so we're trying to find W. So then you'd put W over here because that's the side, and then the angle that is opposite the W, that would be R. Okay, now some of you are like, okay, Kevin, I understand that. Now what happens with the A and the B? Well, the A and the B are also sides, okay? That's why they have small letters. So these are all um, sides. So they are like the Ys, the Ws, and the Vs. So, Let's say, for example, let's go back to our example where we're trying to find V, okay? Let's go back to that one. And let's get rid of all of these ugly drawings that I've done here. And let's change the formula back to its original formula, which is the one your teacher probably uses. So if you're trying to find side V, which is over here, then this will be a V, so you'd say V squared, okay? And then this angle over here would be the one that is opposite the V, which is a P. Okay, so you are gonna have um, cos of P, angle P. Now the A and the B are the other sides that you are not looking for, or the other side. So that would be um, the Y and the W. It doesn't matter which one's A and which one's B, it really makes no difference. But let's say for example, we can say Y squared plus W squared. I'm gonna run out of space here. Whoops, cos of P. Um, and then you can say minus 2, and then y and w. Okay, so the most important part when using this formula is just to find this part and this part, and to make sure that they are opposite of each other. And then the a and the b are just the two other sides that you haven't used. Okay, but now this is only going to really make sense when we start using or doing an example. So let's go do our first example. Okay, so the goal of this question is to find the length of... D, E. Okay, so that, that's the side over here. So that's the side that we would like to find. And let's quickly go write down our formula. And we said that this side and this angle are opposites of each other. So the side that we're looking for is D, E. We already know the angle opposite that is 107. So maybe think to yourself, where could we put DE, because we don't know what that is, and where could we put 107 in this formula over here? So well done if you realize that we could put DE over here on the left, okay, because that's the side that we are looking for. 
The A and the B are the two other sides. That would be the 29, for example, and the 27. If you say 27 first and then 29, that's also okay. And then you're going to say minus 2 times 29 and then times 27. And then you're going to say cos of that angle, which is 107. If that part right there was a little bit confusing, then you may just need to um, pause, think about that a bit, maybe watch this again and see if that part makes sense. Now, to find DE, I'm just going to go type all of this on my calculator. Okay, so I'm literally typing in 29 squared plus 27 squared minus 2 times 29, 27 cos of 107. Now, take whatever that answer is. Don't round it off because that is not our final answer. So on my calculator, I hope it's the same on yours, we're getting 2027.85409. Then to get the DE by itself, then of course we will take the square root. And so DE, if we've done this correctly, should be 45 point zero three if you round it to two decimal places okay so you might be feeling a bit weird right now about this formula a lot of the students that I've taught in the past when I show them this for the first time they do they are a bit overwhelmed that's normal um, but let's try another example okay so let me go write out that formula so c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos of c now remember what we are trying to find is st Okay, and we also have the angle that is opposite ST. So the angle can go there, and then the ST can go there. That's the way it works. So you always want to find that angle and the side opposite the angle. That's the most important part of this formula. So the side always goes there, and the angle always goes over there. So if we had to go write all this down now, you're going to end up with ST as the side. Um, then, then the A and the B are just the other two sides. So the 8 and the 14. You can say 14 and 8 or 8 and 14. It really does not make a difference. Your teacher won't mind as well like that. And then you could say cos of 89. Go ahead, type that all in on the calculator now, but don't round off because it's not our final answer. Okay, and so you should get 256.090661. Take the square root and then you can round to two decimal places. Okay, now this gives us a perfect 16, but I do know that some teachers are very serious about the rounding off. And so if your teacher's one of those, um, then to make them happy, you could simply say 16.00. Okay, let's do another example. So in this one, we need to find H K. Now, if we write out our formula, maybe you could pause the video right now and give this one a try by yourself. So what's important is that we have an angle. Okay, amazing. So we go fill in the angle over there, and then the side opposite the angle goes over here. So that's going to be HK. Uh, what goes over there, sorry. So we could say HK squared. And now, okay, so now the A and the B are the other two sides. So it's the 15 and the 28. So you could say 15 squared plus 28 squared minus 2 times 28. Well, Technically, for those of you that are like, Kevin, it's 15 first, then 28, and then cos 31. Type all on the calculator. Okay, and then if you've done this correctly, you should be getting a value of about 288.979.4674, and then take the square root of that. And, oh, it rounds off lovely, or beautifully, sorry, to 17. So you could say 17, but now once again, if your teacher wants you to say Point zero zero, then that's also fine. Okay, so we've learned the basics of how this formula works, but as we all know by now, it's not always going to be asked like that when you are in a classroom, a test, an exam, whatever, whatever. So I need to show you how to use this formula in different ways as well. So let's take this example. So they would like us to now find angle. I know some of you might be like, what does this mean? This means angle T. Okay, so we're looking for angle T. T. That's the goal. Let's go write out our basic formula. C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos of C. Okay, let's put an A over there. and let's. Okay, now the angle um, is always this part. Okay, so let's go fill that in as T. So we could say C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB. We don't know what it is, so we're just going to say cos T. Now remember that this part is always the side that is opposite that angle. So the, if we look at the side that is opposite, then that would be the 32. So we could say 32, and then the other sides that we haven't used 
would be those. Okay, so I'm hoping that by now you're getting a good feeling of how this formula works. Okay, if not, just watch this a few more times. You will get it, I promise. Okay, so 27.6 and then 20.4 and then cos of angle T, which is what we're trying to find. You see, so now it's not that straightforward and please listen carefully. Having taught so many different learners, I know that there is one common mistake that learners make in this very next moment. So listen carefully. On your calculator, you cannot combine all of these numbers together. The reason is, is that this part here, they are all multiplied together as one term, okay? And they are connected with the cos t. So that is one part. So let me show you a good way to do this. Keep this part together, okay? In fact, because it's a negative, take that whole part to the left-hand side. So we're gonna go, we're gonna end up with this, okay? Then on the right-hand side, you're still gonna have 27.6 plus 20.4 squared, and then bring this to the right-hand side so it becomes a negative like that. Now, you could go and put everything on your calculator right now and do all of that. But what I like to do is just leave everything alone for now and realize that this is the part here that you are trying to get by itself. So this, you want this alone. So to get that alone, you, you need to get rid of these ones, okay? And you would do that by dividing on the other side. So you're going to end up with cos t equals to the following, 27.6 squared plus 20.4 squared, take away 32 squared, over 2 times 27.6 times 20.4. And there we go, okay? Now, it is at this step where I would say we could go type everything on the calculator. So everything on that right-hand side, let's go type that on the calculator. If you have done this correctly, um, you should end up with cos t. Now, please don't round off at this step. We are definitely not at the final answer. You should get 13686558 Okay. Now, remember, they're not asking us for cos t. They're asking us for t. So to get the t by itself now, I'm not sure if you guys can remember how to do this, but this is where you have to use inverse cos. Okay. So on your calculator, you might have to press shift or second function, or something like that. But the idea is, is that you are gonna be doing the inverse of cos, because you're trying to find the angle now. If you manage to do this part correctly and you find the right setting on your calculator to find angles, you might have to ask your teacher in school, but what you should end up with is 82.14 degrees. So that would be the angle T. Here's our next example. So in this one, they're looking for angle y. Okay, so that's the unknown. So let's go write out our formula. C squared, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos of c. Now remember, this is the angle, okay? And then this is the side that is opposite the angle. So what side's opposite the angle? The 24. So we could say 24, and then the 25 and the 27 are just the two randoms that we could sort of just fill in like that. Well, not sort of, Kevin. I mean, definitely, right? Um, have got to have some confidence here, my dude. You're teaching maths. And then, so you got to say cos. And then angle C is the angle we are looking for, which is going to be angle Y in this case. And there you have it. So now remember, don't combine all of these numbers into one. I've seen learners do this so many times. It is because this is one term. So remember that that's one unit. So that part there, keep it together. And because it's got a negative, I would say take that entire part over to the left-hand side. So if you rearrange, you should eventually end up with something like this. Okay, and then on the right-hand side, now bring the 24 over so it becomes negative. In the next step, you now need to realize that this is the part here that you're trying to get alone. So you're going to have to divide by this part of here. And so you end up with cos y equals to 25 squared plus 27 squared, take away 24 squared, divided by 2 times 25 
times 27. Okay, go ahead, type that all in the calculator, but don't round off because this is not our final answer. And so you should end up with cos y is equal to 0, 0,5762962963. Two, so something like that, okay? And um, let me just double check, 576296263. Now remember, to get y alone, you are going to have to say inverse cos or shift cos or second function cos in your calculator. Um, all calculators are different, but you end up with something like Okay, so you're just going to go sh inverse cos of whatever number you just had. And so if you had to go do this on the calculator, you should end up with a final answer of, if you round to two decimal places, 54.81 degrees.